Welcome into the KSO Show. Mason Voth, Derek Young here with you. A little bit of a different Wednesday for us. Normally, uh, we're all about what Chris Kleiman said yesterday, but it's a big day for the future Big 12, as just like all the other conferences had started to do, they all know their opponents for a long time out. The Big 12 has decided to do that as well. Uh, they released their 24 through 27 scheduling matrix, and that is the opponents that you will face and how the rotation will kind of work. There are some interesting things about the rotation that we'll dive into. Obviously some scheduling quirks that will need to be addressed and uh, looked at. And it's a uh, kind of an exciting time. Look, these games are a year away from being played in some cases, but it's still always fun just to kind of see what's ahead, especially with all of these new members in the big 12 so we're going to do our best to, to look through it and take a peek at what is on the horizon for the Wildcats in the coming years. And uh, it's it's interesting to see what is out there for K-State, especially considering um, just, you know, you, you have some, some schools that are staying in the league that you're used to playing consistently that you'd like to continue to see. That trend gets bucked a little bit. Um, you're also going to get some new schools. When do you go there? When do you get them at your place? It's going to be a fascinating time. So uh, just real quick before we dive into the kind of the specifics, anything in general that stood out to you, D.Y., when you first glanced over the the schedules for the next four years of K-State football? Yeah, I got a variety of takeaways here, obviously, I'm looking at it. That's why I look to the side of my screen here. One would be that it appears that you you get one – everyone's going to get about one opponent that it – is protected that they will see all four years. Mm -hmm. And then it seems like there's another couple that you get three out of the four years. And then everyone else, I believe is twice. I want to say. Mm -hmm. So uh, while some would probably want more than KU protected for Kansas state, I think they did this because even in a four year span, which this is tough to do, uh, four-year span with a 16-team league, I think they're going to play everyone at least twice in that four-year span, which is impressive. The only downside of that is you're not going to play either Iowa State or Oklahoma State in 2027, which is going to feel very strange as a Kansas State fan, especially when the the one year you don't play those two teams is the same year, right? So that yeah. that's part of it. And because the way that it unfolds, um, a little bit of bad luck here for Kansas State. And and I'm not criticizing everyone because you can't make everyone happy and, and everything kind of go like this, right? Mm -hmm. But Kansas State has a road non-conference game next year. Yeah. And only four home league games, meaning for the first time that I can remember, only six home games total. For Kansas State next year. That's yep. a tricky schedule. Um, and then also, if we're just going to talk about next year, 2024, we're speaking about three of your five road Big 12 games is kind of that tumultuous, slippery slope that can give you challenges just because of those road trips where you're playing these teams that are, you know, kind of far away. And they're all like in the mountains. What we saw Texas Tech when they had to go to this year, I believe they had to go to BYU, Wyoming, and West Virginia. Yeah. Next year, Kansas State is going to BYU, Colorado, West Virginia. Yeah, it's a good point. I mean, let, let's start with 2024. This is what the Cats get next year. And, you know, you're right. They can't please everybody, but it is a little shocking to see um, that they couldn't have done something to help K State out with you know, 2024, but they probably had a lot of teams that were in the same boat. I'd be interested to see how many other teams in the league are going to end up with only six home games last year, because most of these schools and athletic departments have, they've been smart about this. They, they have figured out, okay, we want to have seven home games every year. So we'll play our road non-con game in the, you know, in the year where we have five conference games. K-State's been really good at it. That's why if you think back to 2021, I guess it was, they sacrificed the home game with Stanford and were comfortable moving it to Arlington because they already had eight home games that year. So if you take one away, you're still at seven, which is the same amount that you've been having every single year. 
now this is a little bit different because the expectation is not to have six. And it's just, you know, it's unfortunate for the fans. It's unfortunate for the athletic department. I mean, you're losing in some way you're losing money that you count on every year because you expect to have, all right, we got seven home games. We know we're going to sell out. We know we're going to get all this other stuff and you don't get that now. So that's disappointing. And I mean, KU and Oklahoma state, are great draws. I think it'll be fun for everybody to see Arizona State for the first time. Cincinnati doesn't really do it for you. I mean, it's not the most overwhelming home slate next year for K-State. No, but at least you get two of the big eight teams in there because yeah. I think it's important. I think you got to – look, I'm trying to look at it. You get KU and Oklahoma State at home in 24 and 26. That's a good thing. You get Iowa State at home in, in 25 with TCU and Texas Tech which are probably starting to feel more like conference opponents that you want to, that kind of makes it feel similar. Um, Now I will say that that 27 home slate is going to feel weird because there's not a whole lot of traditional big 12 to it Yeah. besides maybe Baylor because your other home games are, you got BYU, Cincinnati, Utah, West Virginia. So the 27 home one doesn't really feel and maybe it will feel by like Big 12 by then. I mean, that is we're, yeah. we're talking four years away, but from what we know right now, what we're used to right now, the only one from a home standpoint that feels really weird might be that 27 one. And part of that's also because you don't get Iowa State or Oklahoma State at all, but yeah. you do you get Texas Tech again. So you get Texas Tech, what two of the four, they're the well, one of the teams you only play twice in the four-year span. But I think getting KU all four times, getting Oklahoma State and Iowa State three times, that's probably the best you can ask for. Yeah. Well, and if you look through it, they, they've done this in a way to kind of cycle through the schedules there. They did this in a way where you're going to see every team every other year, and then you're going to be in a position where – your rival, your main rival, you are going to get every single year. So K-State and KU will always play. And then after that, it's just kind of they, – they they obviously try to do their best to make sure in most years K-State gets Oklahoma State and Iowa State because those seem like natural rivals. You have a long history there. But they obviously, with the way the schedule had to work out, wasn't going to work out perfect. And to the weirdness factor of all of this, you're in a, a in a mode now where if you look around, starting next year for K-State, over half of the teams in your conference, they will be brand new within the last two seasons. So nobody yeah. is going to feel like a, a normal opponent on your schedule. Like it's going to feel like for a long time, K State is basically playing nine non-conference games every you year. To, and you have to remember, you didn't call Colorado back too. Yeah, that's which, true. That's true. I, yeah, yeah. So I think that needs to kind of go into the calculus a little bit. I know some people are going to be pissed that you're not facing Oklahoma State or Iowa State every year. Um, Farmageddon's really kind of boiling. Yeah, well, Oklahoma so- State, I could care less. Like K State has shown zero interest in winning games in Stillwater for the last, <laughs> or basically the entirety of my life. They've been close so many times, but they've had some heartbreaking losses there. So, yeah, I guess, I guess if, you, well, I guess it kind of works out. Like, in two of the two of those three games are at home at least and skits of Golden State. Yeah. So that's good too. Um, yeah, you, you win that part of the battle. But uh, I forget what I was saying, but it's – this is what the Big 12 did. And you can disagree. And this, I've already seen some tweets from Scott Wildcat. He's definitely in the disagree disagreement um, uh, crowd in this one. But the league and the way that they formed this schedule valued playing everyone at least twice instead of protecting more than one rivalry. Yeah. Yep. No, I, I think – and. And honestly, what would you at the end of the day, what would you rather? Would you rather play everyone home and away across a four-year span, or would you rather play Iowa State every year? Mm. Because that's they basically said we'd Given, rather. They basically said we'd rather see K State and, and Cincinnati play at each other stadiums at least once in a four-year span, rather than K State Iowa State all four years. And I you still get three or four. I think it is probably wise that they did it that way in the long run uh just because i mean there was a stretch when it was 
you you would feel like you'd go a long time without facing opponents in the old like north south scheduling model and that was even i mean you would skip two years like it would be okay k-state faced texas in 06 and 07 so they're not going to play them in 08 and 09 and so then it's not 2010 again until you you face them and even that felt like oh man it's been a while you're you're not it it was always kind of special when you played them i think you want to have it to where you see all of your teams on a consistent basis. I mean, we talk about it a lot with the SEC and the way that those schedules work out. I mean, some of those teams, they're going seven, eight years between seeing certain schools. Um, so it's okay. It's It sucks that you lose Iowa State because that has turned into such a good uh, rivalry for the fan bases and typically has been a really entertaining game. So I would have liked maybe to have seen them work it out a little bit differently, maybe if you could have protected two, but I understand why maybe they couldn't have. You know, um, what, you know, you know what's really interesting is that we don't go back to Jones AT and T Stadium until 2027. <laughs> uh, you know what? I'm not going to complain about that. Although, uh, <laughs> le- I mean, let's let's right, let- K State does well there, though. It's true. That is very true. Uh, let's just start going through it year by year, looking at it and uh, break it down that way. 2024. Home opponents, Arizona State, Cincinnati, KU, Oklahoma State. Road opponents, BYU, Colorado, Houston, Iowa State, and West Virginia. So it'll be the first time that K-State faces new league members, Arizona, Cincinnati, and BYU. And then the road trip to Houston will be new. And I think a lot of people will be excited to go back to Boulder uh, for the first time in a while. And it'll be kind of cool to see K-State and Colorado on the field together. We can both, How about we both do like, and we'll try to make these different from one another, two two takeaways from each year. So 24, what are your two takeaways? Uh, 24, selfishly, I am excited for Arizona State coming to Manhattan. Uh, shout out to my boy Gabe Swartz, RIP. His Sun Devils coming to town. Not dead. <laughs> Not dead. Nope, still alive, still kicking it. Already texted me about how he's pumped that, Arizona State's going to be coming to Kansas once a year uh, with the new scheduling model, so that's good for him. And, I mean, the biggest one in this, and it's it's a cheapie, so I, we don't even have to count it, but the only six home games because they have the road game at Tulane next year. And just think about where K-State's road games are next season. New Orleans, which we know is a trek, Provo, Utah, Boulder, Colorado, Houston, Texas, Morgantown, West Virginia. Ames, Iowa is the only, like, Oh, that's a that's an easy trip, and that's still. I mean, that can feel pretty long, uh, depending on what time of game it is in Ames. So, or what, it's or what a part lot of, of travel Kansas you're driving from, <laughs> or what part of Kansas you're driving from, right? Yeah, I don't it's know. I, I did it. I did Manhattan to Ames uh, my freshman year of college, and it felt like it was longer than it should have been. But yeah, no, I it's, agree. I, so you could drive to Ames. You can drive and to Boulder. Drive to Boulder and probably drive to Houston, but man, Boulder and Houston, it's like the drives in next year are even like long. So it's like, yeah. geez. Well, hey, um, let me tell you, I I know from experience, you can drive to New Orleans, Louisiana. So okay, well, uh, I probably man, not all in one day though. <laughs> I probably Actually, I take well, that back. I drove back from the Sugar Bowl last year all in one day, so it can I, be done. I drove. I drove to Houston for the Texas Bowl, so it that sucks, can be done. but it can be done. Yeah, it's it does suck, uh, but it can be done. So my here's my takeaways. One is kind of what I already shared, where you're getting like the road schedule essentially that I think contributed to the demise of Texas Tech this year. Um, having to go to on top of having to go to New Orleans on top of it, right? You get BYU, Colorado, West Virginia. Those are that's a that's a taxing road schedule. Um, my second takeaway, you get the six home games. Um, probably getting KU and Oklahoma State at home. Make it feel like, especially if that first year felt so, you know, I want to say different. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe you have a hard time getting fan appeal. I don't think you will. The Cincinnati one will be a tough draw. Yeah. Yeah, you're you're hoping that that comes at a point where the circumstance of the season dictates that people be there as opposed to, hey, come on out, you know, like whatever. Although, hey, people just showed up for the game against Houston in a, in a big way, 11 o'clock and cold, so it can happen. And, yeah. and you get Arizona, 
is coming to yeah, the Yeah, that's true. As so. a non-con opponent. So it, you're, you're going to feel like you're seeing a lot of them. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I will say this. I mean, it, maybe you feel differently, but K-State's two toughest games next year, you get them at home then with KU and Oklahoma State, or you know, may, maybe Colorado with another year of development is better. Um, and Colorado. so maybe they'd be in there, but Colorado, Iowa State, to be honest, they're not going to lose a lot from this year's team. That's true. That's true. And Rocco backed. I mean, he's he's really young, so he could he could do some things. But and and, and and talk about a clash of quarterbacks in that recruiting class that everyone was like discussed because let's let's try, let's kind of assume Avery Johnson's your starting quarterback next year. Yeah, the Avery Johnson versus Jaden Rashad a matchup with Arizona State. Yeah. No, that's a that's a good point there. Uh, all right, moving on. Twenty twenty five for the Cats. This uh, will be Colorado comes to Manhattan in twenty twenty five, which is That'll be big. A, a little bit of a, a you know deviance from the rest of the schedule. Iowa State, TCU, Texas Tech come. UCF the final home game. Road games, three kind of normal Big Twelve opponents: Baylor, KU, Oklahoma State, and then the big one. I'm surprised that it's not happening in the first year of the new Big Twelve. But K State at Utah, that's going to be a big time matchup. And I mean, you think about where things are right now, given the the shift that you're going to have to make next year if you're your K State, you start to think that 2025 is is where you're going to gear up to have possibly another big year. And that game at Utah could be massive. Yeah. So take is that one of your takeaways? The Utah game. Yeah, I'll, yeah the Utah game is is the is the big one there. Okay, that's one of your takeaways. I will say this in 25, like that that's kind of a fun home schedule, to be quite honest. Texas mm-hmm. Tech's back on the schedule, TCU's back on the schedule, Iowa State, Colorado. You got I don't know if you're gonna have Coach Prime there anymore, but yeah, maybe. Yeah, I don't know. About that one. <laughs> I don't know. Um, and poor UCF. They're like, do we can we get the Wildcats at home? We gotta go back to Manhattan again. Yeah, good point. They're gonna they're gonna familiarize themselves uh, with Manhattan <laughs> quite a bit and, there. And, and so it's a fun home. To be honest, that twenty five schedule is really fun, just in general, because mm-hmm. the road games. One, you get your first trip to Salt Lake. Utah is probably pretty freaking good, and then you get traditional road games yep. against traditional Big Twelve teams. Baylor, KU, and Oklahoma State. By the way, that's a really tough road schedule. Yeah, and also do not forget that that will be a year that K-State travels to Tucson to play Arizona as a non-conference matchup. Jesus, so yeah, I know that's like the year you're gearing up to to try to compete for another league crown with Avery Johnson probably in his junior season. But boy, that's a tough schedule. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, that's that it's brutal, and obviously you think too like TCU will be in a much better place at that point. Texas Tech, that's going to be when they're at the peak. This is a big recruiting class this year for them. You'd think that more of those guys would start to get infused. I mean, th- this is where we start to get into this new look Big 12 where a lot of these schools could present some serious challenges from you, and a lot of them are in a, a really good spot and moving in a good direction right now. I mean, you're right. If if Dion is still at Colorado in 2025, Matt Campbell, as much as we, we crap on him and he is fun to make fun of, He's doing some some more miracle work this year. TCU should be in a much better spot with uh, another year under Sonny Dykes and and able to kind of just get his own feel there. And then Texas Tech, the recruiting class looks good. It sets up for serious talent and the same type of deal going for what Lance Leipold has going at KU. And we know that Utah and Oklahoma State, I mean, Kyle Whittingham and Mike Gundy are probably two of the most consistent and impressive coaches in college football over the last 15 years. So – that's that's a that's a tricky schedule for the Cats. And then, like I said, you throw in Arizona, which, by the way, like Jed Fish has Arizona moving in a really good direction right now. So uh, that 2025 could be a difficult year. That's uh, and again, things can change two years from now. But just looking at it on the face, that that's one that seems like it stacks up pretty tough for the Cats. 2026. Here's your look at this. Home games with Arizona the, the, can't escape Arizona. They will be uh, on the schedule for the first three years. This will be the first time they play as conference opponents. Houston comes back to Manhattan, KU and Oklahoma State, and then uh, road trips that year to Tempe, Cincinnati, Boulder, Ames, and Fort Worth. This is a little bit more of a traditional one. The Colorado, Iowa State, TCU trips will feel fine. 
Arizona State, I think that's probably one that a lot of people are like, yeah, make that game be like November 17th and we'll be there and all yep. this other <laughs> stuff. So th- this is actually, a, looking at it, this is a fun schedule to me. Those are, that's a, a good balance. Of, that's a good balance of road games, of like fun locations, fun schools to play against. And then your home schedule, you got KU and Oklahoma State holding it up. It'll be the first time as a <laughs> – I don't know. I, it's tough to get excited for Houston whenever they're on the schedule right you know, now. You know, you, know, you know what that home schedule looks like? It looks like looks like a basketball schedule that you're really worried about. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> um, and this will get K State back on track with seven home games in 2026 and five road games because the 2026 non-con schedule is Missouri State, Washington State, and then Tulane. So I wonder if that changes. So I just wonder, because they want the Power 5 non-con game. And, and it's not even the Power 5 anymore. The Washington State isn't that. Yeah, I don't know. That'll be interesting. They, they might grandfather it in. Uh, and then we'll we'll get into it in a little bit, but there are some issues to sort out when 2027 schedule comes around. But that is uh, 2026. I mean, to me, the, the takeaways on this are, um, I mean, think think about what we're looking at here. That's going to be K-State's first trip to Fort Worth since, what, that's going to end up being 2022, looking back through the schedule. So K-State will have played there the year that they won the Big 12 title, and then they won't be back until 2026. And Which is probably okay because yeah. no, nobody really likes the the experience at AMG Carter Stadium. No, and then, uh, I mean, the, the other one that, that stands out there, um, being able to Tempe. to have that road trip to Tempe and Boulder, I think both of those are probably fun places. Nippert, for people to you're not travel. excited for Nippert Stadium? You have said some not good things about Nippert Stadium, so I don't know that I'm looking forward to that one. Yeah, so it's a, big, it's a weird shape. You go back to Colorado again, so you do have that three. Your Colorado is one of those teams that you're also playing three times, so mm-hmm. it's getting the Iowa State and Oklahoma State treatment, but you get two of those are actually in Boulder. Interestingly enough and then you don't play Colorado Iowa State the, we'll get to it 27 is the weird schedule then probably not a whole lot of people are going to be thrilled with but it is what it is my takeaways in 26 are it's a good thing KU and Oklahoma State are there because I don't I'm not sure Arizona and Houston are going to draw too many people I'm not sure Washington State is a non-con to go, that's yeah it's a little bit of a sour home schedule in 26 to be and quite I mean you're also Tulane is the other home game in the non-con that you're you're banking on Tulane keeping this longevity, which we just know doesn't happen at these group of five schools. At some point, yeah, they Tulane, do fall off. Tulane, and Tulane won in Manhattan the last time, so yeah. I don't even people want them to come back. Yeah, <laughs> that's, uh, that's so that's one takeaway. The second one, probably how we introduced this. Like I think twenty-five is probably the most complete schedule. Uh, top to bottom mm-hmm. and probably presents a lot of freaking challenges too. 26 is probably the most fun road wise. I think. Yes, I would agree with that. 26 is the one that like, 24 if you're is want- a close second, 24 is yeah. a close second. But if you're wanting to have like a good time, you can look at that and you can, I mean, realistically, if you're this type of K state fan, you, Four, like, four of those five, you will go out of your way to go to, and and have and like, two of them are very drivable in Ames and Fort Worth. The other one, Boulder, you can do, and then Tempe, you'll make what you can happen to get there and and experience that. Um, and you know, the last time K State played a game in the Valley of the Sun, they won, so you, they got that going for them. Yeah. So now twenty seven. <laughs> um, this you is at home. That's about it. <laughs> This is the funky schedule where you don't get Oklahoma State, you don't get Iowa State, you don't get Colorado. Tech comes back on, well, but you also, you also don't have TCU. This is what will be interesting is K-State Colorado is currently scheduled in the non-con in 27, but we know that that's well, the one it sounds like will get wiped away, but we'll have to see because it may be tough to find anybody that can do it. So there would be the outside chance that Colorado is a home game and uh, – That's actually supposed to be a road game in 2027. So I bet it doesn't happen because I doubt K-State goes back-to-back years in Boulder. Or three Um, of four. Or three of four. (laughs) 
So, so that probably gets wiped away in K-State's looking for new opponents, but it's it's just one of those weird things to keep in the back and, and of your head. Going, and they're, and they're, I would say they're, they're going to look for a home game, but I guess it doesn't have to be because even if that's not a home game, you still get seven. Yeah. If it's a home game, you get eight home games that year, yeah. which is interesting. Um, no, I mean, be a, you, it, they better want to be in the stadium for the BYU game or BYU will take all the tickets. Yeah. So, that's what I will say about that. Yeah. I, I mean, this is just one of those that it's honestly outside of the KU game, it's it's three road trips to like barren wastelands where yes, yep. Orlando is well populated, but not in terms of football. It's not easy for people to get to. And depending on what time of year, like you're dealing with like Disney World traffic and stuff, it's Although, not, maybe, it's not you fun. Probably, and you might want to play UCF in November or people might want to go maybe but then like tucson isn't the most glamorous of spots in arizona and then lubbock it's just a pain in the butt to get to once you're there lubbock is not bad at all but it's just it's not fun to go to so cincinnati um, not a big draw at home no utah will be at least you get baylor baylor is like your third most yeah big 12-ish team on the schedule west virginia who knows what they'll be cincinnati eh. This is twenty seven's rough. I, I will give you that, fans. Twenty seven is rough, um, but at least you're you're going to have seven, maybe eight games a whole. Yeah, and look, I, I think that this is it, it. Right now, this is where things sit. But you're just kind of hoping that at some point along the lines, like everything figures itself out, and some of these schools are of an elevated level and can prove no, themselves. Sure. But you're looking at a lot of schools there that the track record is not very proven. And that's kind of the thing in general with the Big 12, the way it is right now, is there's only a handful of schools that over the last 10, 15 years have proven to have the consistency where you can basically pencil in, okay, that's going to be a team that wins at least seven or eight games during the course of this season. That would be K-State, Oklahoma State, um, Baylor, you probably could throw there, TCU as well. But – Utah, but you're not going to see some of those consistently. And so it makes it tough. And that's when you're going to get, you know, the volatility of this was kind of interesting. After KU made it into the college football playoff rankings last night, there have only been five teams in the history of the rankings that have never appeared inside of them. Texas Tech is one of those teams. And it illustrates that over the last decade, Texas Tech, they can't do anything more than win seven games in a season. And so you can't really count on them. Like it, it's just going to be weird and a big feeling out process for the Big 12. And it also highlights why a lot of people think that K-State could and should kind of take the mantle as being one of the top dogs in this league for the next couple of years. So 24, it's a complicated road schedule because you got to go to all three at BYU, Colorado, and West Virginia. That mm -hmm. just presents some challenges that you don't typically undergo on a yearly basis. 25, that's just – Kind of a tricky schedule, top to bottom. You got to go to Utah. You got to go to Oklahoma State. You got to go to Lawrence. You host TCU. You host Iowa State. You host Colorado. That's not the easiest of schedules. 26, a little bit easier because you get KU and Oklahoma State at home. Arizona and Houston are definitely beatable. But you still got to go to Colorado, Iowa State, TCU, and your first road trip to Arizona State. Now, if Kansas State's pretty respectable or even good in 27, like they get run. I mean, that's 27 is a year. If you have a good team, that that's yeah. a very manageable schedule. Like if Kansas State's good in 27, they're going to win a lot of games. Yeah, you would hope so. We'll see. It's going to be it's going to be fun. It's it's great to see how this works out. And the, the team's now on the schedule moving forward for K-State in the Big 12. But it's certainly different to look at, and it's going to cause some very interesting uh, travel plans and other scheduling quirks that people have to figure out. It's your your usual weekend in Manhattan. It's not going to feel the same ever again once this season comes to a conclusion. And I think we already kind of knew that. But now you look at the games that are going to be on the schedule moving forward, and it just kind of illustrates that more. It, it puts it in your head. Wow, this is really going to be different. It's wild that you know losing two more schools and adding four more makes such a big difference because. You know, even this year, K State sees two new schools at home. It doesn't feel that odd or that strange, but 
starting next year, things are going to feel a whole lot different for Big 12 football, and K-State will be right in the middle of it with some tricky schedules. I don't necessarily think it's unfair the way anything played out. It's just unfortunate uh, would probably be the way that I would state it in, in terms of you don't get to play some of your opponents like Iowa State every year, and the 6-6 six and six thing next year, that's not very, that's yeah, not very six enjoyable. The 6-6 six thing is probably – the biggest harbinger, I would say. Yeah, especially when, I mean, we talked about it, but next year's road trips, BYU, Houston, West Virginia, those are, and Boulder, those are long, long trips, New including New Orleans on top of that. So it's not just that you're playing only six home games. It's that that, that extra non-con road game is also not an easy trip. So at, K-State's in a tough spot for 2024 in terms of their travel. And I think it's good that you point out, like, Tech struggled with those big road trips this year. They had so many of them in such – in, like, what, their first seven or eight games of the year, and they lost all three of them. Um, I don't think K-State's necessarily in that position, but it's it's certainly something to monitor, and it's going to make life tough on K-State next year. I agree. All right, well – that is the Big 12 schedule for the next four years, at least the opponents and how the rotation will work out. Dates, those will be provided at a later time. I'd imagine we get those uh, probably sometime in like January or February. That's kind of when we got uh, them this past year. So that will be the next big thing to look out for football scheduling wise. But good to know, at least for now, who K-State will get at home and on the road next season and for years to come. It's an exciting time thinking about the future of the Big 12. So that will do it for Derek Young. I'm Mason Voth. Thanks for watching and listening to the KSO Show. Be sure to stay locked in with everything K-State over at On3 with kstateonline.com. Get all the stuff you need over on the message boards or the great written content as well. Stay up to date with recruiting and team info as K-State football and now basketball getting into full swing here as we start the first day of November. So that will do it for this edition of the KSO Show. We will be back on Friday for the pregame pod previewing the Cats and the Longhorns.